This woman's latest venture has the potential to save the lives of females around the world. We wanted to be a company that empowered women, not a company that used fear. But for more than 20 years, she had to fight for her own survival in her adopted homeland. I could be sent back to a country where I didn't feel like was my home. Who is this modern hero? My name is Yasmin Mustafa, and this is my story. Yasmin's goal in life is to fight for social change, especially when it comes to issues facing women. Why do you care so much about empowering women? I, for a very long time, didn't have a voice. I didn't have a chance to do what I wanted to do. I was told what I wanted to do. Yasmin was born in Kuwait in 1982, when cultural norms often dictated a woman's future. Women were not encouraged to pursue education or business opportunities, and many were forced into arranged marriages, including her mother. Was that something that affected you? Yeah, it definitely affected me coming here and realizing that wasn't the norm. And I do sometimes play this game of what if, like what if we hadn't come here, what if we had stayed in Kuwait. But the course of Yasmin's life took an unexpected turn when she was eight years old, and she and her four siblings were left with relatives, while her parents traveled to Philadelphia for her father's business trip. My dad was a mechanical engineer, and he was actually very well known in his field, so he was always very busy taking trips. And my mom had always tried to join him. She happened to be six months pregnant at the time, and it was supposed to be a few weeks, but it ended up being a few months. And they ended up having my little baby brother at Penn Hospital. A few weeks after Yasmin's parents returned home, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. Her family lived in constant fear of the attacks happening outside their front door. But that all changed on September 20th, 1990. The ground was shaking, the windows were rattling, and all of a sudden, the door opens. Then these two men walk in. They were, I think, ambassadors that were sent to collect all American citizens out for their safety. They were gonna fly us back to Philadelphia, and all because my little brother had just been born in the States and he was a US citizen. And while they escaped the war zone, life in the United States was difficult. Your dad wasn't able to transfer his engineering degree. He was basically stripped of his degree and his status. He ended up actually buying a 7-Eleven store that was open 24 hours, and it became a family business, and it was all consuming. It was all we did. And when she wasn't working, Yasmin was doing her best to assimilate to American culture. How did the kids respond to you? It was tough, and especially being from out of the country, because I looked different, I couldn't speak the language, I was not from around there, I didn't have established connection yet. So to me, the middle school and high school are not parts of my life that I want to remember. Despite the social setbacks, Yasmin was an excellent student who dreamed of going to college. But when it came time to apply to schools, she was faced with a harsh reality. I remember coming across a, a field in my form asking for my social security number and not knowing what it meant and going to my parents who went to a lawyer so that I could get one and then coming back with the news that not only do we not have one but we're considered illegal, that we're considered undocumented. I remember thinking we were brought here as refugees, we are supposed to have our paperwork, how did this slip through the cracks and I felt like I was on the outside looking in at my friends and my classmates being able to do things that I couldn't do. And being an immigrant of Arab descent created new challenges for Yasmin following the September 11th attacks. And I remember walking into work and my manager was saying, Yasmin, you don't know how to fly planes, do you? The day after 9-11. And everybody just laughing like it was funny. And then I was fired from, from, that, from that job. Yasmin began the extensive process of applying to become a citizen, but soon after, she learned her father was planning to send his family back to live in the Middle East. My mom stomped her foot and said, I'm not going. 
Wow. And it was the very first time she had ever stood up to my dad. And then in a huff, he went upstairs and packed his bags, closed the bank account, and, and left. It was a defining moment. With her father gone, as well as their life savings, Yasmin's mother was left to pick up the pieces and stood up for her daughter's right to an education. My mom actually stormed down to the Montgomery County Community College and told them that they had to enroll me. And they said, we can't, she doesn't have the documentation. And she didn't leave until they said yes. That worked. It did, it did. They let me take six credits at a time, so they wouldn't let me be a full-time student. And I had to pay out-of-state tuition, even though I'd lived there for 11 years, but we said, absolutely, we'll do it. Yasmin was inspired by her classes and life experiences, and she decided she wanted to be her own boss someday. So she enrolled in Temple University's entrepreneurship program and found her true calling. How did you know you always wanted to be your own boss? I've been at the bottom, I've restarted. So I know that I could pick myself back up again. After seven and a half years of struggle, sacrifice, and studying, Yasmin graduated summa cum laude in 2006. I cried during my graduation. I knew that education was gonna help me break out of, of where I was at and making it finally. It's, again, one of my most proudest achievements. After graduation, she began working for a consulting firm while developing her own website aimed to help bloggers monetize their posts. But she knew nothing about coding, so she took classes in New York at Girl Develop It, an organization designed to bridge the gender gap in the tech world and to empower women to learn the art of programming. I learned how to develop a website, and I felt like I could do anything. I was like, wow, look, I actually understand this. Yasmin helped the founders expand the program from New York to Philadelphia, and it's now offered in more than 50 cities across the country and has served more than 60,000 women. And while mastering the tech world was a milestone, it paled in comparison to the day she officially got to call herself an American citizen. That was on April 19, 2012, at exactly 10.39 a.m., and I'll never forget that day and that time. It took 22 years. 22 years from when we arrived, 11 years from when we started the application process. And I'm gonna tear up. I felt like someone with an identity, someone with roots, someone who could say, yes, this is my home. Because being undocumented, I was very worried about being deported at any moment. Becoming a US citizen, I felt like you can't take anything back from me now. I am someone and I'm gonna be someone that matters. I'm gonna be someone that uses my abilities for good. Yasmin celebrated her citizenship by treating herself to a well-deserved trip to South America. The six-month trek was an eye-opening experience and the inspiration for her latest business venture. Every place that I went to and visited, I either kept hearing stories of women who had been attacked or meeting women who would share some story of a time that they were harassed or abused. And then a week after I came back to Philly, my neighbor was attacked. She went out to her car and she was grabbed from behind. She was dragged into an alley. She was severely beaten and brutally raped. That was the moment that Roar was born. Roar for Good is the social impact company Yasmin launched with her mentor and friend, Anthony Gold and their goal is to diminish violence against women around the globe. Statistics show that one in four female college students will be sexually assaulted. One in three women is a victim of domestic abuse, and nearly 40% fear walking alone at night. So the company came up with a plan to change that. He said, we need to make something that is discreet but stylish, something that cannot be used against the person wearing it, something that can help deter an attack, and something that can get help when needed. And that's how we came up with Athena. Athena is a wearable safety device that allows you to connect with people when you need help the most. Walking home late at night, what I can do is set the status on my phone. What it does is it instantly sends my coordinates to my friends and family. You can click on that text. It'll open up a link to a map and you can see where I am. 
that has two modes of operation, the silent alarm and the alert mode. You press and hold the button for three seconds and... Wakes you up. And soon, the device will link directly to all local police departments, so assistance is right at your fingertips anywhere you go. And a portion of all sales goes to educational programs to hopefully end the problem for good. We partner with nonprofits that they specifically focus on teaching consent, respect, and healthy relationships to kids when they're most impressionable, which have been proven to decrease attacks, harassment, and abuse against women. You're not trying to put a band-aid on a problem. You're trying to get to the root of the problem and create real change. That's where real change is going to happen. Absolutely. Because of her efforts as a social entrepreneur and philanthropist, she's been asked to make commencement speeches and speak at coveted conferences like TED Talks. And in 2016, Philadelphia Magazine honored Yasmin on its list of top 20 Philadelphians, an accolade that had bigger meaning than a title. When I got the email congratulating me, I realized that <laughs> going from a refugee to an immigrant, to being undocumented, to finally being an American, just having that identity, it meant a lot. I finally felt like I belonged. Follow Modern Hero TV on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.